again, that you've been with me before, kind of know my I very idiosyncrat uh, prayers. I said, I don't believe in many, in a lot of cases, I don't believe in a formal prayer. I do believe in singing. And I do believe in pictures. There are alternate ways of praying besides saying, Our Father. Okay, nothing against the Our Father. But there are alternate ways of praying. And one of the things I want to do to you is, this is a woman called Merusia. We're going to start off every class, but I got a different, not all of them are rich, but different versions. Next week will be uh, Pavarotti singing the same song. Okay, so I have that with uh, Michael Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I got uh, uh, John, um, John Michael Talbot, a couple of fifths of the oldies. You remember John Michael Talbot, okay? First of all, I want to welcome everybody. I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your schedules to come down thank here. Thank you. I hope I make it worth it for you to be here, okay? Uh, while this is a classroom setting, I try to do double and triple duty by whatever we do, whatever we say, the whole purpose is to bring us closer to God. The whole purpose is to bring us that much closer to, to God and to his mother and to uh, all the saints, really, uh, that they're there to help us and protect us. Um, ground rules. If you've got questions, don't be afraid to ask them. I mean, if you want to interrupt, interrupt. This is a free-flowing class, so, uh, and trust me, you're not going to, I'm not going to lose my mind, I'm not going to lose my thread, but then I lost it, then I walked to the door, so you just going to give me a rest and come up for another prayer. Uh, if you notice, you might, you might interpret something as a little bit of irreverence. It's not meant to be. It's my smart alecky way of doing something sometimes, but trust me, it is not being irreverent. It's just... My flippant way of doing something. And you'll see a few of that tonight where I got to get into it a little bit, but it's my flippant way of approaching the subject. Uh, you'll, you'll find that I skip. Oh, come on, and welcome. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Uh, I'll be skipping around uh, because that's the way my brain works. I've got linear, so I do ch -ch 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 all over the place. You might hear the same subject two or three times from different angles, but it's, oh, he's talked about this before, but that's me skipping, but only that looking at it from different angles, sometimes me again. The only way I can learn something is looking at it from different ways and finally saying, aha, I know what they're trying to do. Uh, 
I'm famous for uh, forgetting details like names, dates, other important stuff. Bear with me. Uh, though again, those who have had me before do. I can't remember a day for. I got to look at my tail. Oh, I'm Bill Bowden. Okay. <laughs> We will have five classes. Uh, some will be longer than others. Some will be extremely boring, which will be next week. All of us will well, all really have you on the edge of your seat. Uh, uh, you will finish knowing a lot more about Mary and church beliefs than you do now. Uh, some material will be repeated in different forms, but again, that's how I approach a, that's how I approach a subject. Uh, next week, like I said, is, is very boring because we're talking church fathers and boy, Nothing can put you to sleep faster than reading the church father. I gotta tell you. Forget the Iquil, forget anything. <laughs> open, up, open up a church father, five minutes you're asleep. <laughs> five minutes you're asleep. Uh, you go learn from Jim. The last class we're talking about the rosary. Everything you thought you knew about the rosary is wrong. How oh, how's that for? Okay, so and I open my when I when I started doing the research, I said, oh wow. <laughs> Can't be it. I, so I verified it. Yeah, I double checked it. Yeah, yeah, it's right. So oh, I said, okay, so this could be, you know, nothing wrong. It's still rosary, it's still prayer, but what the beginnings, especially, not what everybody thinks of. Because again, common pious, whatever, has nothing to do with reality and history. Uh, anyone who's been in my class before, and you'll see it again tonight, uh, knows what I'm about to say. When you are reading the Bible, you've got to close your eyes and put yourself in the scene. you got to look at it. You say, for example, you've got Zacchaeus. Here's this tax collector, this short, fat man wearing a tunic. He climbs a tree to look at Jesus. Now, that's got to be some hell of a sight to see a balding, fat man wearing a tunic, climbing a tree. <laughs> Jesus looks and says, I'm eating in your house tonight. You know what his first thought was? What the hell am I making for dinner? Okay? Well, you've got to put yourself there to visualize that because there's said, Jesus says, I'm having a dinner at your house today, but there is a lot unsaid. He goes off to his wife, guess who I'm over dinner? She says, ha ha, no you're not. <laughs> I have nothing prepared, I don't have any food in the house, and we have no musicians. She says, don't worry, he'll be here anyway. She says, no you're not, and then she, you know, she's pissed and bad at him forever, and everybody goes, he, he, did something the way I just gave her permission, okay? Uh, look at the birth of Jesus. Uh, almost every picture you see of, uh, of Mary uh, has an important posture like this. That's BS. Mary was a mother. She changed his diapers. They don't show any pictures of her changing diapers. She walked around kissing him. They don't show any pictures of that. However, somebody beautiful sent me a picture. Christmas card. This goes back about four or five years ago. It's the only picture I have or came across that shows Mary kissing the baby Jesus. It's the only picture I have showing her kissing him. That's what mothers normally do. Mothers don't walk around with folded hands. They kiss, they change diapers, they play with the baby. This is the real Mary. This is the real Mary. Okay? Uh, you got to remember one thing. Without Jesus, there is no Mary. We do not worship Mary. We honor her. We pray to her. We do not worship Mary. It's only, God is the only thing you can worship. We ask Mary, Mother of Jesus, we ask Mary to intercede for you in front of Jesus and God, okay? But you do not worship Mary. She's a human being. She's not a God. Very clear because, again, a lot of people are kind of fuzzy on that. You don't worship God. You don't worship Mary. So, having said all of that, by the way, before I, before I get into other stuff, I guess I did for me there are three ways of praying. What one is obviously a, a prayer, I'll follow him, whatever, whatever. Another way is music, which is my way of praying. I must. Oh, and every morning I listen to a half hour of hymns and things like that, just whatever. The third way of praying is pictures, drawings, paintings. Here is a picture I came across, I came across about a year ago. It's a picture of our God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit 
putting a crown on the top of Mary's head. In other words, this is Mary, Queen of Heaven. That was the title of the picture, Mary, Queen of Heaven. You look at that picture, and you say, wow. And you start into it. And before you know it, the picture draws, draws you into it. You, you die in that looking. You get into the picture. And that's how you pray. You, you, you get into a picture, and you, you realize what you see, and you let it, and you let it affect you. So I got the best one of all, though. Uh, about 10 years ago, a new Bible came out, just like we, what the world needs is another Bible translation. <laughs> okay. Really. This was the Cosmic Bible. And in it, there were no illustrations, which I had seen a pre-print copy. I hadn't seen the actual Bible. I saw a pre-print you know, uh, uh, preview of what the Bible looked like. And it had a number of different drawings in it. In the air was this particular drawing. It's a woodcut. It shows Mary sitting against the wall, kind of with a forlorn look in her eyes. I'll pass this around back if you want to look at it. With a forlorn look in her eyes. And the, there are certain symbols in there. She's got, she's got the symbol of a lily, holding a lily. She's got the, uh, the cloth of Joseph, the tribe of Joseph across her lap, so you know who, right off the get-go, who she is, okay? And I call that picture 10 minutes after the angel left. You see the picture, you understand why. Because here's this girl, she had to be... I've got a feeling, you guys said probably 16 or 17, somewhere in that neighborhood, but she was a young girl. It gave little appearance to her. By the way, let me stop you for a second. So, all you Bible scholars out there, how many times did Gabriel appear in all the versions, New Testament, Old Testament, Quran, you name it? How many times did the angel appear? Oh, come on. First one, obviously, is to Mary, right? The Annunciation. The angel of the Lord came unto Mary, right? The second time was to Mary's cousin Elizabeth to her husband in the temple, saying, Behold, your wife shall conceive. And he says, How the heck does that happen? She's an old woman. She can't conceive. He says, For saying that, you're not going to speak until the baby's born. And that was it. He was dumb. He couldn't speak a word until the baby was born. The third time you see the angel Gabriel is in the Quran. The angel Gabriel is recorded as giving the Quran to the prophet. That's, there's a background there. We'll get into that a little bit next week. The, for, for them to take it is really safe. Okay? Okay? And, and Christian now, but before that, I put it in there, but it tells you something about how they view Mary, how they view the documentation. So that is basically a... Uh, uh, what, what about the Old Testament? I mean, there's angels showing up, my recollection, here and there. They weren't named. They weren't named. Okay. They weren't named. The only the, the, you got... Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Gabriel, uh, Michael, who was in Revelation. Uh, Raphael, who was in... Uh, which is in... Uh, oh, Tell me. Thank you very much. She's Tobit, my favorite one, by the way. I love Tobit. Uh, Pierce and Tobit. There are, there is another angel in two kings, but he's unnamed. Uh, there is another angel, I would say earlier, uh, with one of the prophets, I can't remember. It was about five times. But the three with days are uh, Raphael, Angel, uh, Gabriel, and Delilah. Uh, you, you, you look at Mary in that picture, like I said, she, you, you can see the vulnerability. She's saying, what have I said yes to? What have I got myself into? What is going to happen to me? Okay? And the artist did a phenomenal job of capturing all of that and putting it on a painting. And I can look at that painting for a half hour every day and just get into, get into what, what Mary is, who Mary is. Uh, the confusion, of course, Mary, because again, it's something really can be, you know, probably most highly born if he says, yay, yay, early. Huh? What is all this? I know nothing about this. I have no man. I have, no, I have, no, I have no relation with a man. How is all of this going to happen? I mean, it's total, total confusion. It's total confusion. You, you got, you got to, uh, 
hell of a turn of her for. You gotta put again put yourself in her place and say, my God, I just how she survived that is beyond me because that's a tremendous amount of willpower just to be able to understand what the angel said to her, okay? And react to it. And, 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 and say yes. Say yes. Going down an unknown path, say yes. That's that's key. All right, we're going to start, as I said, we're going to look at the, tonight we're going to look at, uh, Barry is found in the New Testament. New Testament of the, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Acts of the Apostles, uh, Revelation, did I miss anything? Probably not. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary is very prominent in Matthew and Luke. Uh, Mark just says, and she, look, I don't think he names Mary, I'll, I forget, but I don't think he names Mary. And John has her in two places, uh, Cana and at the foot of the cross where Jesus looks. And John says, John, behold your mother. That's the only good places. Uh, another thing, I don't know if you've got any way to count, but in all the Gospels, Mary has less than 200 lives. So the words. You never hear, you certainly never hear her husband. Joseph doesn't say a word in any of the Gospels. You look at it through the Gospels. Mary is poor. 200 words. That's good. Pops. Here she is, mother guy, you expect, oh, she'd be spouting all the stuff and everything else like that. No. It's just 200 words. That's good. If we're going to start now, we're going to start looking at um, what Matthew has to say. And everything again, as I said before, you can't talk about Mary without talking about Jesus. You, uh, if you go into the uh, the various Gospels, that Mary is a uh, an add-on. In other words, they're talking about Jesus, and Mary just happened to be there. Okay, they didn't treat it, she wasn't treated cavalierly, but again, their focus was Jesus. Mary was there, but their focus still was Jesus. If you go into, uh, if you go into uh, uh, Matthew, you get into that. You think of Matthew is a uh, story of genealogy of Jesus. I ain't gonna bore you. I have it written down here, but I ain't gonna bore you. Okay. Uh, I might, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bore you with the last part. Uh, Zerubbabel, father Abu, Abu became the father. It came, uh, came the father Azur. He's the other father of Zadok, Zadok became the father of Akim, Akim the father of Elud, Elud the father of Eliezer, Eliezer became the father of Matham, Matham the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14, from David to Babylon exile is 14, and from the Babylon exile to the Messiah, 14 generations, 14, 14, and 14. And that one is a uh, a mythical number in Jewish tradition. Uh, Matthew goes on to say, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, says he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Uh, Jewish tradition, again, is uh, you were married, um, what we would call an engagement today was considered part of marriage back then. In other words, you were engaged today, okay, you're dating, da, 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 but you sure as hell all. Today's generation is different, but our generation, you still live in your house, you, your father lived in his house, and God help you if you got any corner, if you were caught in between houses, okay? Today's different. But again, same thing. What we call an engagement today was part one of the marriage. Part one of the marriage is, okay, let's see if we can live together. Part two of the marriage, we got to bed together. Part one of the marriage could last six months. Part two went for eternity. But the word married in our terminology is a little different under the what, what Matthew was talking about. Uh, uh, before they lived together, that is when Joseph and they actually went to the bed, she was found with child, okay? Such was the intention of behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take care of your wife and your home. For it's through the Holy Spirit that the child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son in the name of Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. What is the emphasis of Matthew? First emphasis of Matthew is the lineage 
uh, of David through Joseph. Uh, second, the birth of Bethlehem was a great sign that Jesus descended from the house of David. Third, notice, there are no shepherds, uh, there's no singing angels, okay? I said another gospel, God here doesn't give a rat about shepherds. He's more interested in the genealogy. Jesus came from those. He is a true son of David. That was the whole purpose of that is to prove the genealogy of Jesus, that he was in fact, a, a, he was in fact, uh, since he was a son of David, he was in fact a lot of the Messiah. Uh, getting into, you getting into what they call covenant theology. A covenant theology is uh, God approached Abraham and says, I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Uh, and you will be my people. And that that promise, that covenant, went from David down to his sons, to Isaac and Israel, Joseph came down to Moses, and came down to King David, came down to Jesus. Jesus is a uh, he's the embodiment of the promise, the covenant that God made with Abraham. Jesus delivers what God promised. <coughs> Uh, uh, by the way, some of them, just for the case in point, so you can jump up and that's how they have a Christmas mask. If they're reading, if they're reading the thing, you love the Or has this picture of me doing that. I can see a lamb right now. <laughs> so if they're reading the genealogy of Jesus out of Mount Hill, you can wild up and say, except for Jehovah, Chantel, and Zubril, none of the names in the last section are found in the New Testament, other than Matthew. So I think we this have so and so and so and so. Oh, you gotta believe Matthew because that's the only place the names appear. They're not appearing anywhere in the Old Testament. We're about to get the names out of but you can stand up and say, prove it! <laughs> and I wish Pay's father go, shut up. Shut up. The birth of Jesus is a regular in that, again, Mary and Joseph that did that quote know each other. So, in, the, in here you see the, uh, there's a formality involved. There is a, um, uh, I'm trying to get the right word, uh, the, there's no intimacy. But you find out a little bit, you find that in Luke a little bit, you find that when we get into Luke. There's no, everything is just, this is it, I mean, Connect, 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 connect. That's the way that is reason. Look at something different. Uh, let's get this. Get this. Yeah. When you talk about the lineage, okay, and it's only in Matthew, but isn't that kind of the idea of the Bible that when it was put together was that each especially the New Testament, okay, the, each one was put together to tell specifics. So there really wasn't a need to talk about the lineage again in one of the other books. He's in from the author's intent. What, what was the author trying to prove? Whether he was stating a fact or not, what was the author, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? What were they trying to prove? What, were they, what was their story? What were they telling you? Matthew was writing his, his, his gospel for a Jewish community, all right? And in writing for a Jewish community, he wanted to say, okay, we got these uh, 14, 14 to 14 previous kings in the lineage, so Jesus obviously is descended from kings. Most of Jews at that time couldn't name all, was it, uh, 42 kings? They couldn't name so. If he said it was so, it's so. Okay, because they couldn't name it. They weren't going to name it. Yeah, you, 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 you didn't... Uh, it was not that conversant. I mean, it's not, we sat down with a book. I mean, books rolling in synagogues, right? scrolls, right. parchment, okay? Uh, so well, a lot, of, lot was just passed up from one generation to the next by word. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think it was, you had mentioned, too, is that how important that was that you did, you know, the individual that was being passed to didn't add on or subtract. That that was, you know, this is how it's to be passed on. Uh, and it was, seemed to be 
like you said. And they had a lot of other pious stories, let's call it that, okay? And the problem is Hebrew is not a language that's easy to write. You're missing, you're missing vowels, so it's all consonants. You're missing a vowel, you've got to figure out what both of that were. But as a result, over a period of time, it became, there was trans, transliteration mistakes. And you would have a group of rabbis sitting in a room, and they would take a text right out of their thing, and they'd argue for days over the correct meaning of that text because, well, you got to put a vowel here, and they got to put a vowel there, and it would change the whole meaning of it, okay? Sure. Change the whole meaning of the text. And they would sit in a room and argue all day. In fact, you go into the, you, you go into, uh, uh, the Midrash today, which is a, uh, I was in one, I was published in one. We got a group of young uh, yeshiva students, college age students, that kids, college age students, and they go in with a rabbi, and they literally tear a reading apart, try to dissect the true meaning. And then you, then they, they, they're worried about nothing. So they say, well, Rabbi Ishmael said, the other guy was a Rabbi Jacob, and the other one was told, they'd all pull out all these old time experts who give a opinion based on what they want to see. In a lot of fashion going up because one expert will screw with another. So the reality is at the end of the class, what's right? You don't know. Right. You don't know. Same with, with our gospels. We'll get into that in a little bit also. As you look at the gospels, and that's what I say, you gotta you gotta put yourself in there. I gotta stop right there because I just, I gotta answer your question. I said I, I, I've, I tell you, I've been watching the shows. I, I just become a new favorite show. So I said, anyway, this afternoon around 4 o'clock before class, I was watching your segment, uh, uh, The Wedding of Cana. And then they show the whole thing of Jesus uh, went out of, ran out of wine, and Jesus' mother approached Jesus, you know, they, you know, do something, okay? And uh, Jesus goes the whole thing, and I'll get that in a little while. But, my point is, at the end of this, all this, everybody's having a good time, okay, okay? Uh, at the end of this, they show Jesus and over that group, and Mary's over here in this group, and you see Mary going to Jesus. I cried. I cried. Because nowhere in the Gospels does it say that. No. But you know damn well it happened. Yeah. You know it happened. Sure. Right? Am I right? In other words, yeah. I mean, when you see that, that's the validity right there. I mean, yeah, it's not there, but damn it, you know what happened. And that's my point. There's a lot of stuff in the Gospels which isn't there, but which really happened. <laughs> and that's my point is you got to put yourself in there as a third world observer looking through your glasses to see if that, that, maybe that was missed or something that you could add on. In other words, you get which I was telling my wife at dinner time. Hello, Mayor. She's watching me. <laughs> Hi, babe. <laughs> uh, we talk about the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 9, you're the blind man. So Jesus and the are walking into town, and there's this blind man, and the disciples ask Jesus, why is he blind? Because of his sins or the sins of his parents? At that time, if you had a physical ailment, it was because you were a sinner. So they, the gospel says, you're not, and Jesus says, no, 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 he's, he's, he's blind right now to, to show the world that I have God. Okay, so Jesus cures him, and you go through the whole thing about the Pharisees don't believe, and the mother and father kind of bail out, and all this other stuff, and that's cool. I'm 81 years old. I have yet to hear a priest give the following. So let's start at the beginning of the gospel. So Jesus and his disciples are walking through town, and they come across a blind man. None of the blind, none of the apostles ask Jesus, "We got a blind man here. Can you cure him? Can you do something to help him? Can you alleviate his problems?" No. They say, "Oh, we got a blind man. What was his, What caused his blindness?" They saw an object. They didn't see a person. They saw an object. Okay? And that's, that itself is blind. So the apostles were just as blind as the Pharisees because they didn't recognize a man. <laughs> they didn't recognize a human being. And their whole thing is, oh, what causes blindness? Like, Jesus, can you help him? Can you do something? Can you, you know, cure him like you cured everybody else? You don't see that in the gospel. Nobody says that. They go through the whole thing. So you got this whole thing of, John is a metaphor. I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked, but I have to apologize. John's metaphor, light and darkness being this, one of his great themes. And then the gospel, you see the, the, you can see the Pharisees are in darkness, and they stay in darkness. The parents are uh, in darkness. They see the light, but they can't admit that they see the light because they get thrown out of, out of the synagogue. 
You'll see the Pharisee, and see the, the obviously the man cured went from darkness to light, obviously. Uh, the, the apostles, the darkness, and they stayed in darkness. There's one other group, though. Yeah, in fact, again, it's not mentioned in John. You got step out and look into it. And that is the third, the last group mentioned is us, because that gospel is read to address us. It is saying. This is what's happening. Are you a believer? Are you going to believe that Jesus can do this, can affect the miracle, can be the person he says he is? If so, you are moving from darkness to light. If you say he isn't, you're saying you're darkness. And that is basically the theme of that gospel. But again, have you heard a priest mention that? No. Because, like I said, you've got to step out of this sometimes just to be able to look at it from a out-of-person view. You're, you're, you're an alien. You're looking at people on Earth. You're watching new things. Okay, you're looking very poorly type of thing. Uh, you know, Jesus is Jewish. It was. It's a bit of a Joshua. And Joshua means Yahweh saves. God saves. All right. Uh, we got that him kid. Okay. Let's get to Luke. We got a lot more detail in Luke than we have in Matthew. Those are the shepherds appearing. The angels are saying, we have the visitation of, uh, of Mary to Elizabeth. Uh, you have the circumcision of Jesus, the presentation of Jesus in the temple. And Jesus, when he was 12, with the elders in the temple. All that's in Luke. Doesn't appear anywhere in Matthews. Luke is more concerned with Jesus as a person rather than continuation of a lineage. He's, he's the fulfillment of the covenant. He's, he's God, but he's there. Luke says, he's here. He's back at my over eyes. He's, he, he's here. Uh, the Gospel of Luke is, is a first of a two part volume that continues the biblical history of God's dealing with humanity found in the Old Testament. Showing how God promised to Israel had been fulfilled in Jesus, and how the salvation promised to Israel, accomplished by Jesus, has been extended to the Gentiles. The stated purpose of the volume is to provide Theophilus and others like him with certainty about early instructions they have received. To, per to accomplish this, Luke shows that the preaching and teaching of the representative of the early church are grounded in the preaching and teaching of Jesus. So when you're listening to Somebody else, for example, Paul. He is grounded in the teaching and the preaching of Jesus. So he is passing on what Jesus passed to to him. He's passing that message on. Uh, I got a lot of stuff in here, and if I start it, you just feel all you gonna walk out. <laughs> all right, you read. I so read I'll, I'll ask you this question. We'll back up, okay? My impression, first off, is that Mary couldn't have said no. What? Because. She was born to do this. Predestination, you said. Yeah. She started yeah. pretty well. I don't think so. I want to say that I could go on either side of that question. Okay, I go on either yeah. side of that question. Uh, if she was predestined, I think it takes something away from her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it can, you, you, you're in a situation where I've got this 60-year-old. Uh, an angel has just appeared to her. You say, oh, what the hell is this going on? I mean, what? I've actually an angel. I mean, this, this is something. Okay? So right away, the, the angel blew her mind. But the angel opened his mouth and started making his pronouncement. Hail Mary, full of grace. She's really shaking her shoes now. I want you to be the mother of the, of the Savior, of the Messiah. She said, no. She said, no. She 
said, yes, but I think she could say no. The reason being is she could be out of fear. She's saying, I am totally overwhelmed by what's about to happen. I really don't feel like going down that path. Well, I would think that the same thing that as Jesus went about his mission, he was guided by God. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same thing is, and my, my take on it was God set this up with her birth. And at the time, you know, he's he's got to be preparing her somehow, however he does it, okay? And then when the time comes that the, you know, Gabriel comes down to, to uh, make this, uh, finalize it, she could, I could see her being everything, you know, sitting about like a dream come true. She dreamed this all along, and now it's like, holy cow, yep. you know? So she couldn't, she couldn't, but anything, fulfill the dream by saying yes. There was, could have been no inkling of saying no. Could, could all be, the, I'm sorry, I have a question. But wasn't Mary born without sin? Yes. So her being born without sin, and then being, um, the mother of God. Because God so, already, God knew she would say no, but God didn't, she wasn't predestined to say no, but God knew, God knows what we're going to do before we do it. God knew she would say yes, but God didn't make her say yes, but he knew she would say yes. Right. So, but she, she was already she born. Was not not much of a difference. Not she wasn't much of a difference. Art, you got a very good question. <laughs> You have a very, very good question. I don't no, know. That's I like don't asking, did they have to bite the apple? They were given, I mean, they were told not to, weren't they? Exactly. Yeah. But they did anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because God gave them free will. Yes. And that's what she had. Same yes. thing. Free will. She had. Except she was born. They were born without so own. So were they. That was God. And the sin came from biting the apple. They weren't born with sin. We're not born with original sin. So, again, uh, you have a very good question, Art. Uh, I could, like you said, I could take either position and argue with it. I really could. I could take either position and argue with it. Um, again, you, you, all the readings you do are, are, are the Blessed Mother. Um, there's so much that's not said in the writings. There's, there's, there's so much that's that there. Again, the whole focus is on Jesus. Mary is a good. The only time Mary is mentioned is because they're using Mary to amplify something of Jesus, okay? But the reality is, uh, uh, she, she was an important, absolutely an important part, okay? Uh, uh, one of my things, which I, I'm still, I think about it, but I have a couple of conclusions. We go in Luke, and says, Luke says, okay, so Jesus is born, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the next time we see Jesus is they bring him to the temple where he was still baby for his presentation. The next time we see Jesus is when he's 12 years old, arguing with the rabbis. I mean, so what happened from the time he was born to the time he was 12? So he grew up as a normal boy. Or did you see a dead pigeon in a resurrection, you know, and flew off again? You, you don't know. You, you think about it again. You got to close your eyes and think about the picture you see. Uh, from the time he was 12 until the time he kissed his mother goodbye at the, at the wedding of Cana. Really saw his ministry during the uh, What happened in those years? Jesus and John were second cousins. Did they ever meet each other? Really? That's Jesus and John? That. I'm sorry? So that's not the impression that you get. You get the impression that they've never met each other. They never, that's exactly. They have never met. That's the impression I got. They've never seen each other. The second cousins, though, you would already think of, you know, it's wedding, family party, 4th of July, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> They would be there, right? <laughs> but yeah. you, you see, the inference you get to all the readings is Jesus and John have no idea who the other one was. Other than that, he's a prophet, he's a prophet, okay? But they weren't saying, hey, buddy, how you doing? It's a long time ago. No. Jesus and John never met each other? Yeah, that's and, what I said. And jo did John, John baptized yeah, Jesus. John baptized. But before the baptism. Oh, when they were kids, when they were growing up. Oh, you know, oh, like oh, oh. 
And they were having a Fourth of July party oh. at the house. <laughs> 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 I was a little confused. All right, so again, it's a, uh, you, you close your eyes and you got to think of the pieces that are it. there. You think of the pieces that, um, that are not in the gospel. And how could it not? I could, just like you said, I could, you can look at something, come up with two or three different scenarios. Really. And that, not that one's right or wrong, it's just there's no guiding light in the gospel to say which is right and which is wrong. All right, so we are a, uh, uh, I got to read from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Luke. In the days of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah, the priest of the division of Abjah. His wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances for the Lord blame us with. I want to stop there for a second. Righteous is a big word. If you were called righteous in, in ancient times, I mean, you were, you had your hand in God's hand. I mean, you were holier than holy, you walked around with a hill. Right? That's what righteous really was. I mean, obviously you didn't have a hill. But uh, you were God's very person. You obeyed all the commandments. You you were good to your, to your neighbors. You took good to the poor. You were good in almost every facet, and that's what made you righteous. And to be called righteous, that was one of the highest compliments a person could get. It was to call him righteous. It really it was a tremendous compliment. But they had no child because Elizabeth Barrett and both were advancing years. Once, when he was serving as priest in his divisions before God, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord's to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of people were praying outside, the hour of it says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Zechariah is troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many, many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will neither drink strong wine or strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, either from his mother's womb, and he will turn. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward their children. Zechariah said to the angel, "How shall I know? I'm an old man, and my wife has advanced in years." And the angel said to him, "Reply." I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. But now, since you question me, you can be speechless again. Nothing is born. And that was it. It took place. He lost his first day word. Comes out, he comes out of the, he comes out of the top of it. Okay. <laughs> First auctioneer. <laughs> hey, think about that. Okay. After after this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went to seclusion for five months, saying, "So has the Lord done for me at a time when you see fit to take away my disgrace before others." The sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent to God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Excuse me, one second. There we go again. House of David, just like Matthew. They, they bring in his ancestry and say, right there, you, Luke doesn't really care, but he still brings in House of David. He says, Hail, favor, and one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled by what he said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. I mean, an angel walks into your room and says, Hi there. What is your reaction going to be? <laughs> right? <laughs> I got to assume she had a similar one. So I guess, he, he said, don't be afraid, Barry, for you, you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive and bear a son, you shall name him Jesus. You will be greatly called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give the throne of his father David, and will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and it's in him, baby, no way. But Barry says to the angel, how can this be, since they have no relation with a man? And the angel said to her, reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. 
That's it. That's it. It's tremendous sense. It's, 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 it's one of those sentences you just kind of say and you move on to the next sentence, but the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Think about it. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. It's just one of those things you just... Wow. <laughs> Oh. And behold, your Elizabeth, the old, has conceived a son in her old age, and this, the sixth month for her, was called barren, but nothing will be impossible with God. Mary said, Behold, I have a handmaid of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed. During the days, Mary set out, traveled to the country, and hastened to the town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant left in a room, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment, for at the, moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant my womb left for joy. Blessed are you who believe, and what was spoken to you by the Lord will be fulfilled. Close your eyes again. So we got Mary trudging up the hillside to her cousin Elizabeth's house. And then, and then, and then. But you gotta, you gotta say, hey, Joseph, how did you be there? Because he had sent his wife to the hillside alone. So Joseph had to be there. Zechariah had to be there because he's watching his, his wife Elizabeth, who's already six or seven months pregnant. So it was that party too, it's a party of four. <laughs> right, so right, the matter involves somehow. They don't show anywhere in the gospel. But you gotta assume they're there again. The distance between Nazareth and where Elizabeth was, you, you're not going to you know, let your pregnant wife do it on a donkey all by herself. You'll be with her. So you know, Joseph. What were you saying? The distance is what? Oh, probably 40 miles, 50 miles. 40? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they walked. They didn't have cars. They walked. Or they had donkeys. But the reality is, it's more than walking. It's the, um, when you're on the open like that, you were subject to robbers and. Yeah. Whatever, so it, it was. It was dangerous. It wasn't easy. I thought I read somewhere that her parents, like, uh, hooked her up with a caravan, for the, you know, for the group to go. Could be. I don't know where. Could be. But again, it's just. And then, a, did the angel say that uh, when he was talking to Mary that uh, Elizabeth was six months old? Yep. 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 Yeah. Abby Hall and Elizabeth, the kids, but your cousin, is six months pregnant. He's, the angel said six months. Back all up. Well, let's go to the book. <laughs> let's go to the book. Acts, John, Luke. Here we go. Luke. The three. Uh, and I will tell you this. Your cousin Elizabeth, also in her old age, has conceived this son, and she who people call Baron is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, You see before you the Lord's servant, let it happen to me as you have said. So I say, uh, Yes, yeah, she was six months old. Mary, Mary had just conceived that Elizabeth was six months. But they were, John and John, the, John the Baptist, and Jesus were second cousins. You would assume they were bumped into each other for 30 years. Again, the reality is, when was the last time you saw your second cousin? I mean, we're, uh, right, so we, okay. uh, it's, it's possible that they never saw each other because, right. yeah. You know, um, is there any history outside of the Bible about um, John the Baptist? Like, I'm guessing that his parents probably died when he was, like, early teens because they were already elderly. And was there any, like, um, historical um Oh, who, 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 of where he went, you know, or does he just show up oh, in the Bible with the, like the preaching? Like so, I just don't However, know. now that you bring it up, Jesus, Joseph, Elizabeth, Zechariah, both John and Jesus both had to have a wacky uncle in the family somewhere. We all have wacky uncles in the family, right? Wacky uncles, what? We look at soldiers as a wacko. Well, guess what? They had to have wacko uncles back then in those days, too. That's shown again in the Bible, but you got to know somewhere in that family tree was a wacky uncle. <laughs> all right. My favorite prayer. Mary said to Elizabeth, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. 
For he has looked upon his handmaid glorious, and behold, from now on all these will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age to those who fear him. He has shown might with his arm, dispersed the angry and mind and heart. He has thrown down the rulers from the thrones, but he has lifted up the holy. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, according to his promise to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his descendants. They only remained with her about three months, and they returned to home and said, she remained three months, she was there probably at the birth. She was probably at the birth of the child. Which, to me, says she could have, her and Joseph could have traveled anywhere they wanted to go, right. all by themselves, mean? because they were protected, and she knew it. Well, they would fly, they had a flight to Egypt. We, we, don't forget, we, well, we after the birth. We, right, we, we, but that, was, that was afterwards, though, too. Yeah. But then again, right, exactly. They had not they had nothing to fear. Not and she point. knew she it. She ain't going to fought that, trust me. Because again Because she was told by Gabriel not to worry. Things uh, are gonna be okay. Being told not to worry, uh my wife and I are having dinner tonight. So my wife, to, my wife was, I love her dearly. We were married 58 years. I really love her dearly. She's having dinner. She says, are you nervous? She says, hell yeah. She says, don't be. Everything will be okay. I said, I'm so nervous. She says, I know. But don't worry about it. Everything will be okay. Now she could say, don't worry. Everything will be okay. But guess what? I walked through that door. I was nervous. <laughs> okay? So it's just, it's just the same thing. You're there. You can feel it. But oh, yeah. she, didn't have, she didn't have a magic wand. That's otherwise... Uh, she lost Jesus for three days in the temple when he was 12. Her clairvoyance should have done it exactly yeah. where her room, but she didn't have the clairvoyance. Right. Right? So. All right, some comments. The Gospel according to Luke is the only one with synoptic Gospels to begin with a literary prologue. Making use of a formal literary construction of our, the author writes the prologue in an imitation of Hellenistic Greek. Uh, Luke is not only interested in the words and teachings, but also the larger contracts of the birth, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, let's get into uh, sorry, I guess I, I got a lot more. If I if I read the same thing, more. This is the shepherds. When the angels were sent to them. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Lest they go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made to us, as the angels had told them. So they went to hasten and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, made they know the message that had been told about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what had been told by the shepherd. And Mary kept these things reflecting from on her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as the hope had told them. And Mary kept these things reflecting on them in her heart. So Mary gives birth. She's got a rough time. Yeah, they're going back from Nazareth down to Bethlehem to give birth. They go out of the room, so she's in stable giving birth. And shepherds come in, and the first inkling that she has of what the age people told her as a conception is, what's happening is, you gave birth to God. She said, well, yeah, the angel told me nine months ago, but I really didn't, I wasn't that sure of who was, you know, do you ever see me or not? You don't know. You gave birth to God. And all of a sudden, I think Mary realizes what has exactly happened to me. What she said yes to, and that's when they slide come here. Mary kept all these things reflecting about her heart. Because I think she finally realized what the best occasion had happened, and then she did give birth. And again, before that was a um, wishy-washy, where the shepherds come up and says, that's the Messiah. Oh, wow. That what they just told me, the Gabriel told me five months ago, was true. Big call. And that, that's it. Uh, 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 so a little bit more. Uh, when they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law, the Lord returned to Galilee to, to their own town of Nazareth. 
The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Uh, each year the parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up and pointed to the festival. After they completed the days, as they were returning, the boy remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know that. Thinking that he was in a caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked around among their relatives and acquaintances. They didn't find him. So they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple. Now, can you imagine? They ate in the caravan. Their friends and relatives have no idea where they haven't seen him, so they go back to Jerusalem. They don't want, they haven't found him. Now, the anxiety level is ratcheted up. They too! They still have a, the anxiety level is really ratcheted up. Day three, they still have a, now you're climbing the walls with anxiety. What happened to my son? After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting there with the teachers. Listening to them, asking them questions, and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And they, and they mother said to him, well, son, why have you done this to us? The father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. He said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. That was it. And so you, we, t you know, you ask about, you know, what happened in all these years between, you know, when he was born and, and when he was twelve, and well, between twelve, and and uh, you, you provide a picture that shows a mother doing a mother thing, yeah. kissing her child. Yeah. What's not to think that? Sometime after they left the church, after those three days, she didn't thump him in the head and say, now, don't do that again, that kind of thing, you know? Uh, I mean, still, uh, recog I, still probably I, I, recognizing, I mean, she knew what he was there for, okay, but I, w I wouldn't, I would, I would, I would find it hard to believe that. Uh, I, I, think, I think I got one of these, I yeah, think I got yeah. one of these. Don't ever do that again to me. I, Don't I, ever do that again to me. Right. And I, I, can't, I can't think that on occasion, maybe rare, but that didn't, that didn't happen because they had, both her and Joseph had to be guiding him yeah. in the oh. direction that he was intended to go. I agree with you. I think Joseph would teach you to be a prophet. I mean, Jesus yeah. just didn't show up at the synagogue and pray right. Jesus for, for, for 10 years. Joseph would teach him a craft. Right. Okay, you could be a carpenter, the same thing, carpenter, yada, yada, yada. Great. What happens is that the, after that, uh, Mary sees, I think that's the first inclination of Holy Family, Joseph and Mary get, of the track Jesus is going down. Yeah, I love you dearly, but I'm doing my own thing, Bob. And she says, no, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I am. Yeah. Cool. That was not how that ended. All right. We're going to go with the Gospel of Mark. Mark gave no details on the birth of Jesus. Uh, didn't happen. As far as Mark is concerned, it didn't happen. But, uh, can I follow through on, on, on what you said there, though? Yeah. Is, uh, I'm... At that point, he's 12, okay? And you think about, okay, so he's th then he becomes 13, okay? Now you're a teenager. And you can't tell a teenager anything, okay? They're going to do their own thing. Excuse me, one second. What does a golf ball and a 17 year old kid have in common? Neither one listens to you. Right. Very good. <laughs> Very good. But that, that's the point, right? Until. You know, until that wedding, and then there again, you know, yeah, he's, he's not interested in being there to begin with, probably, okay? And again, mother steps up to the plate and says, okay, kid, you know, you're here for a purpose. Yeah, but there's a difference. We'll get, okay, we'll forget, look, let's get right into the job. Let's get right into the job. When he was 12, it was his mother saying, what the heck are you up to? And the wedding came, it was Jesus saying, I don't want to do it. 
So on one hand, got the mother saying, what's going on? And Jesus said, Cana said, what's going on? But the reality is, Cana was the beginning. Let's get, let's get to Cana. So John, right, John, uh, da -da 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 -da, probably John too. Uh, Mary is not shown in the ministry of Jesus in any of the Gospels, with the exception of John and the wedding of Cana. Let's talk about Cana. I can read this and then we're going to really get into it. On the third day was the wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. But Jesus said to her, Woman, how is your concern in fact be? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for a Jewish ceremonial wash, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And he told them, draw some out and take it to the head waiter. So they took it out, and when the head waiter tasted the water, they had become wine. But without knowing where it came from, the head waiter called Brian and said to him, everyone serves good wine first, and then the people have drunk freely an inferior wine. But you have kept the good wine till now. And Jesus did begin to the beginning of signs of Canaan, and so revealed his glory. And after this, he and his mother and disciples went to Capernaum and stayed there for a few days. Now, close your eyes and let your imagination run loose. First of all, Jesus and his mother and his disciples and friends are out of way. So there had to be family or there had to be some relationship there. Weddings at that time was not like we all go down the bottle of barge room from 1 to 4 o'clock and celebrate get our cars and go home. Why did that took two or three days? Because you had to travel a lot of distance, you stayed over, okay, and then you might go home after a day or two. So why did we usually do one, two, three day type of affairs? So Mary goes, finds out, how I don't know, but again, you have to close your eyes. She somehow too is that they have to about why. She goes to Jesus and says, Jesus, my son, put you on my wine. And to paraphrase, Jesus says, hey, Ma, what do you want me to do that? She looks at her, doesn't say a word, gospel doesn't say a word, but she gives him the look. <laughs> Every mother who has a son knows what the look is. Am I right, ladies? Yeah. She gave him the look. She didn't have to say a word. She just went, and that was it. Jesus said, yes, Mom. <laughs> and she turned around and looked at the head waiter and she said, do whatever he tells you. Now, being a, a wine stop myself, I have to, the old drink and drink is a good glass of wine. Wine is biblical. Scotch isn't. But wine is biblical. <laughs> they had six 50-gallon jugs of purification water, which he turned into wine. Do you know how much wine that is? 700 bottles. There had to be some party. <laughs> Drinking the best wine in the world. 700 bottles. That had to be some blasted party. Well, that was the end of the party, too. Well, that's the end, so it's even better, because you, now you're totally forgetful what's going on. 700 bottles of wine. My God, that was, <laughs> I'm sitting again. You got you got deconstruct. You got to take out of the thing and kind of build up your old picture. And I have this picture of everybody getting absolutely plastered <laughs> on the best line of the whole wide world. So you got to get back to Jesus, the relationship with Mary. He was not being smart he, when he says, "Ma, what do you want me to do?" And that's how my own, that's how I would say if my mother asked me the same thing, I said, hey Ma, what do you want me to do? Ma? Go ahead. It was not being uh, uh, he was he wasn't being smart and he wasn't trying to make her bad, he was being answering her back. He was just saying, Hey Ma, what do you want me to do? I don't know any local wine stores, I didn't bring an extra wine with me, so what do you want me to do? Okay. Jesus, that's your problem. Wait, do whatever he does. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't that be telling that she was there for the first miracle? That she was the instigator of the. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. She was the instigator. Absolutely. She was the mother of it. Absolutely correct. I mean, that just occurred to me as you said uh, this. Thank you. That's exactly right. That's you know, exactly right. Mom was there, and mom was the one that pushed him to.
Because she like said it wasn't, said. it was not yet his time. Right. And she said, yeah, and it is. She says, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it, baby. Go ahead, do it. And yeah. so, what did you do? By the way, the second thing, again, you, you, you got to read into this, you got to close your eyes, you got to think. The second thing to think about the obedience of Jesus to his mother. <clears throat> he didn't argue. Other than it's not my time. There was not one of the there was no argument, there was no backbiting, there was no whatever. He did what he was asked to do. And she was also releasing him to what she knew was the end. Yeah. She yep. was saying... Like, that goes back to the opposite when they were in the temple, to 12. You have two conflicting things. She was holding him back and now she's releasing She was holding him back in the temple, now she's releasing him to the world. Right? She said, well, so what are you going to do? We've looking for you. She's holding, she's holding on to him. Here she said, Oh. She knew how it was in. Yeah, no. You, you, you look at this and you kind of just, uh, I, I can read that, that, that one part of that gospel again every day and I get a little different insight. I get a different look at it. That's what you got to do. You, just, you can't just read the words. You got to soak them in. You got to figure it. You got to be pictured. Like I said, Covenant, they did a, oh, probably a 20 minute section on the one indicator. Uh, at the end of it, where everybody's having a great time, they, you know, they're attacking the wine, the glass they're all flowing, and you see Mary on one side just saying to Jesus on the other side of the room, I cried. I just blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. And that was how it ended. And again, in all the years I read John, and John's my favorite gospel, and this is probably one of my favorite, favorite miracles, I never thought of her saying thank you. But the reality is, she had to. Right? I feel like she's so beautiful. She said thank you. So, uh, and what was his response to what? that? What was his response to her thank you? Uh, Anything for you, Mom. They got the wine. <laughs> they, got, they, they, they got the wine, right? I just avoided a whack in the head. <laughs> She, again, she, she said, uh, do something. And what has happened is she trusted him. Again, she sat aside out. He's been with her, living at home, what, almost 30 years, let's say. Uh, she knew he was something special. Okay. Uh, and yet she trusted him. She trusted him. If she asked, he would respond. That's trust. You, you can say, Bob, get lost. I, you know. I'm not doing it for a miracle for another year and a half. Okay? <laughs> you said that. You said that. But she trusted me. So there's, a, there's a tremendous... Um, oh, I think it's a tremendous lesson where she trusted him and he obeyed her. Because if he says, it's not my time, he meant it, it's not his time. And for him to do it, that's out of pure obedience. That's a pure love, that's a pure obedience. So you get a, um, uh, But how did she know he could do it? Mother's instinct. Mother's instinct. She was told that he was, that she would, at, when Gabriel announced, she, Gabriel announced she was, she was conceived the Son of God. Over 30 years, she probably noticed that he didn't do it, he never cursed. And fought. I mean, all the things that normal kids would do. He was perfect in every way. He's got to be special. I wish you were. Mother, mother always says. Tell you what, I, I remember by growing up with my mother, and you, your mother to tell your own children, mothers know. I don't know how, but they know. Okay? Just telepathic communication, whatever, they know. And uh, unfortunately, I learned too late that they do know. I got beat up a few times because I pushed that limit to the limit, <laughs> okay? Uh, but, yeah, mothers know. Mothers do know. It's just pretty much. It's pretty much. Mother's mother. instinct. Yeah, exactly it. Again, you have a, uh, you do your kids better than they do. You do your kids better than they do. They had no Jesus. I mean, <laughs> Joseph had a past. I mean, Joseph, let me stop for a second. Mary was probably a second wedding for Joseph. Joseph was married. I, my own feeling, I, that is a church doctrine. Joseph was on, yes, he was already married, probably had children. 
His first wife died. He says, hey, I need somebody to help raise my kids. So he married Mary. And I figured perfectly Mary Mary was not that he used to be called the Messiah, because that was not a spy, but I figured as a, as a help for her to help raise his children. And I think is where they say that the brothers of Jesus, they were referring to Joseph's sons and daughters rather than Mary's sons and daughters, because Joseph had a body of marriage. Joseph had a time of Jesus' ministry, had a past. He was gone. He had a past. He was going to go to in the rest of the ministry. Um, the other place in John's Gospel uh, where, where Mary appears is at the foot of the cross. That's a, a crucifixion scene in her, uh, chapter 19. Standing by the cross were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Colpus, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and his disciples there, he, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to his disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her into his home. But after this, where they, everything was now finished, in order through scripture, Jesus had finished the past. Um, again, going back to the chosen, just these things keep a flash in our mind. There's a segment of there called, I have chosen you. And again, that will bring tears to your eyes. Because he's talking about the, the apostles, how he chose the apostles, and how he chose Mary Magdalene. Now, the, the, the movie paints her as a, uh, a woman who's cursed, who has had demons, okay? Uh, I don't think it's biblically accurate. But the reality is, he goes up there and says, I've chosen you. It's up to the apostles, Peter and Andrew and James, and says, follow me. That's what they do. They follow me. Matthew, the tax collector, is reeking in money. It's not what you're doing, follow me. He talks, he's, a, he's a changed person, the Roman centurion, takes off his silk outer garment, throws it in the house, and walks back to Jesus, giving up everything he was, he was building his future on. Follow oh, Jesus. And there's a, it's just a tremendous, uh, It brings to mind, like I said, it, it brings to mind the show, however they come down. Acts of the Apostles. Uh, the only place Mary appears in Acts is in the, uh, way, uh, the first community of Jerusalem. They say, when they entered the city, went the upper road, Peter, John, and Andrew, Jared, and Philip, Thomas, Bethlehem, and James, the son of Simon, son of Jesus. They all devoted themselves to one thing prayer, according to which some of them were Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers were well, there. All right, Revelation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you really want to have fun. Sit down one night, read Revelation. You'll go bust. You'll go bust. You'll go absolutely off the wall. There's so many images in Revelation, and you're going to sit there and say, Ah, what the heck does this mean? What is this? I mean, you just, the, 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 the visual painting, the visual scenes, oh, a, a lamb with, uh, with uh, five horns, with seven eyes on each horn. Visualize that. And then, they're going to see the priest on the shot of scotch and go back, and, go back upstairs and read more. Okay? Uh, and yet, parts of Revelation are beautiful. Um, Mary appears in chapter 12 of Revelation, but before we get to chapter 12, we have to get to the end of chapter 11, which I didn't even think about until I read this on Friday, Monday. Uh, Revelation, the end. Come on, where is Revelation? This is going to be Revelation. This is chapter 11, verse 19. That the sanctuary of God in heaven opened, and the ark of the covenant could be seen inside of it. Then came flashes of lightning, peals of thunder, and an earthquake and violent hell. The key word there is the ark of the covenant. What was the ark of the covenant? Well, it held the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were the word of God. 
Next slide, chapter 12. Thou wilt be, thou a great sign appear in heaven, a woman robed with the sun, standing on the moon, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant, and the labor crying aloud in the pangs of childhood. I've got Mary, who's pregnant with the word of God. So the chapter before, call the Ark and the Covenant, holding the word of God, and I got the next chapter, Mary holding the word of God. She's pregnant with it, and I have a physical Ark of the Covenant holding the Ten Commandments. One follows the other, one reinforces the other. And that's how this was written. So let me read, let me read. And that's in Revelation? That seems, that's rather odd. It's a Revelation, yeah. That it would show up here at this point in the Bible. Uh, yeah, again, uh, I think I read the Bible surprised me. <laughs> uh, what happens? Only I think he's trying to show the connection between the old, between the old way and the new way, between Mosaic law and the, the, the new law with Mary. Now a great sign appeared to heaven, a woman, robed with the sun, standing on the moon, and our head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and in labor, crying loud on the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, there was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail swept a third of the stars from the sky and hurled them to the ground. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman, so that so she, a little bit as she was at the point of giving birth, so they eat the child as soon as it was born. The woman was delivered of a boy, and the son was to rule all nations with an eye scepter. The child was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert where God had prepared a place for her to be looked at for 12 hours and 60 days. War break out, yada, 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 yada. Uh, there is a discussion among biblical scholars if that description applies to Mary or to a generic Israel, the 12 tribes, because the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes. It's, uh, my own feeling is it shows Mary. Now, how do I know it shows Mary? What I just read, right? Mary, the 12 stars, Jordan of the so we got to move. Let me show you something else about this picture. In 2023 years of our sister sister Christians and whatever. Other than the shroud of Jesus, which has an adult abandoned onto it the outline, okay, there is no physical representation of Jesus, the apostles, or Mary. There's no pictures, no photographs. Yeah, but None of that was around, with one exception. Mary put her image on the Tilma of San Juan. That's her image. Well, I know what Mary looks like. That's the image. That's the image because she, the story of the story of whether which we can get to two minutes from now. The story of Juan was that uh, uh, Mary appeared to her first. She said, go tell the bishop, the old chaplain went to the bishop. The bishop, yeah, don't worry, you don't know what you're talking about. He goes home. Mary said, I'll meet you again. So he was going to meet her, but his uncle gets sick. So he's trying to take care of his uncle. He doesn't want to see Mary because he wants to take care of his uncle. So he takes a side road across. <laughs> she says, what are you doing? <laughs> so you're supposed to meet me over the other hill. You know, my uncle's like, yeah, 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 I got to go to the bishop. She says, see those roses over there? Well, this is in December. And there were Castilian roses. Now in Mexico, Castilian roses don't grow in Mexico. They grow in Castile, Spain. They don't grow in Mexico. So we picked these Castilian roses and brought them to the bishop. The bishop, by the way, happened to be from Castile. He knew what the roses looked like. He saw the roses, he opened up the Tilda, he saw the roses, and he knew exactly that they were impossible for them to grow in Mexico. And then he looked at the Tilda, and that's what was on the Tilda. This here has got so much symbolism into it that you can read into it. You look at that into it, probably too natural now. Probably going to too natural now. That blows my mind. But if you, if you ever, like I said, the, we have the Shroud of Turin is the only type of image we have of Jesus. And again, it's, it's sketchy at best. But if you want a picture of the Blessed Mother, this is the picture she made. This is the picture she put on the Tilma. That's what you want. Another factoid. 
when they canonized Juan Diego, Pope John Paul did it for two years ago or whatever, 20 million people showed up at the Basil of Bell. 20 billion people. Billion. How do you feed them? 20 billion people showed up. I one Mexican, I, I was listening to one Mexican, uh, 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 that thing, he says, you know, ask any Mexican, half of them don't believe in God, but all believe in the lady going on the page. I believe that. I, everything I write about, everything here, uh, we're going to get into some of these feasts, we're going to get into Guadalupe, we're going to get into Fatima, we're going to get into Lourdes. Uh, we're going to get to Our Lady Walsingham. Did you, anybody here know Our Lady of Walsingham? Oh, come on, oh, come oh, oh, Our Lady, Lady of Walsingham, W-A-L-S-I-N-G-H-A-M. British, from 11th century. <coughs> British, 11th century, Lady of Walsingham. By the detail, we're going to see all these useless <laughs> factoids. <laughs> and we're going to teach you, okay? Um, you know, that's pretty much has anybody here seen the picture, uh, you know, in uh, Mexico of Our Lady Guadalupe? I'm sorry. No. Have you? Have you? No. no. I've never that. Has anybody here? No. I, don't, I, don't no. I I haven't seen it. I know that there are people in the Hispanic community that have, have seen it, but there is a. I think there's the actual like reproduction in room eight. Okay. Cool. But it's re it's like huge. I like to get there. We get. I, like I would to love to go. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we got to, we're, we're doing that class, we'll bring it in and take a look at it. And again, a, uh, you, you, we've all grown up, you know, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Lourdes, okay? We've all grown up, there's part of our background, part of our heritage. I never really got into one movement until I started doing the research for this. And now it blows my mind because everything else is 1800, 1900. Quite late, it goes back to it's almost 475 years old. So it's back in the 1600s. So it's 500 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, how the Virgin appeared, what the requirement, what the circumstances surrounding her appearances were. It just blows your mind what happened. You just say, wow. Absolutely mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, I'm impressed by Fatima, but I go back next day, I see Guadalupe, I just go, I shake my head. I shake my head. So you want to know something? Let's, uh, yeah, it's almost time to call it quits. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, you. You honor me. You really do. You honor me by being here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next week, I'll tell you right, flat out, you're going to be out here in less than an hour. Because if it's more than an hour, you'll be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about, all right, now that we talked about Mary in the, old, in the New Testament, what the New Testament author said about it. Next week, we're going to see what the early church fathers said about Mary, because everything we believe in Mary, all, 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 the, all the dogma about, thank you, all the dogma we have about Mary is basically from the early church fathers. Uh, perfect cases, we celebrated Mary the Theotokos. Theotokos is the mother of God. That came about from the 4th century capital of Isaiah. They declared Jesus God. If that was the case, then Mary had to be the mother of God. Okay, that's all us. We can get into we can get into what all the early church fathers said. Now, obviously, in half hour. But we're going to cut that one fairly short because I'm ready to ask. Oh, if I do this, I'll kill it. They'll let it come back. So we'll do that one there. <laughs> what the, the class after that is going to be uh, Mariology. Mariology is the four beliefs that are Catholic dogma. Back to conception, the assumption, the perpetual virginity of Mary, okay? These are all beliefs. Now, where do these beliefs come from? Again, they come from the church fathers, because the church fathers basically say, well, if Mary's this, then she has to be this. So it just follow, it follows the track. That's Mariology. That's the fourth thing. That's Wednesday, that's the third day. The fourth day is going to be the uh, apparitions are very, and there's a lot more apparitions than you know about. We're going to get to apparitions that nobody's ever heard of. I haven't heard about it. You probably haven't heard about it either. About 35 apparitions. Wow. And then uh, at the last day, we get into the prayers of Mary. Wow. We get into the devotions of Mary. We're going to look at the rosary. Uh, and uh, we just, again, just touch on that. Today was more about Jesus and the Gospels, but then we will be devoted more time about the Mary. 
We have to start off with the base because when you talk to somebody, not, not a Christian, but not a Catholic, you talk of the evangelical process or like that, they think we worship her. We don't. We honor her. She's the mother of God. We honor her. We don't worship her. But they all think we do. So the starting point for that is what does the New Testament say? You've got to go to the New Testament. Once you know what the New Testament says, now you can go further. Now you can say, okay, this is what we believe, this is what we don't believe. But for, for somebody to accuse God of worshiping Mary, you know, but most people think we do. And that's got to dispel that. Anyway, thank you much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Water, thank you. You know what? Uh, don't push, you can put dollar bills in the basket up here. Make it rain. Are you okay, Mr. Thank you. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? Are we doing and um, I have to get a key to lock up everything. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's real. It's not, it's not, this is a mother. This is a mother. Right? This is another. Wait for you. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.